Hey guys, so today I want to talk about how to get to a higher level in a language. Um, and I can only really talk in regards to say Esperanto because that's the language I'm most fluent in apart from English. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because one of you guys commented in the previous video is about how do you like get to that high level when you're at an intermediate tree level, especially in a language, let's say like Esperanto or Latin or something where there is no like native country you can go travel to and you can go use it type of thing. And it's an interesting question because I believe I've managed to get to that level, but the amount of people who do get to that level is not like that big, especially within the Esperanto community. That's why you've got the whole phrase of the Tadane Comensanto, you know, the eternal beginners type of thing. Um, and I'm just going to run you through today basically how I did it in a sense. Um, I'm going to need some books for this. Um, the problem is I've just recently moved house. If you haven't realized, like I'm in a completely new location and my books are literally all packed up there. So I'm, so I'm going to like grab some books out now and then we will go through that. Why do books weigh so goddamn much? Okay. That's the first time I've grabbed my Esperanto book since I've moved here. Anyway, we're going to pop open this massive ass box I've got right here. You know, I'm just going to lower this so you can see a little bit. Yoink. Um, that did not help at all. Instead, all it gave me was a hunchback. So, we're going to open this bad boy. I don't know if anyone else is like me, but I love collecting books, especially in my target languages, and then just not reading them. <laughs> I don't know why. I just, it's a really bad habit. I should read them more. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'll show you what some of these books are, because I think these, like some of these books are, they're like really good Esperanto books. Okay, look. See this this one here is like this is one of my favorites. This is um this is about oh moto which is the Japanese religion where Esperanto plays a pretty good role within it. And I I find this book like it's just really nicely done. Like look at that paper, man. Um and then I got like a ton of other Esperanto books. Maybe I'll I'll do like a um a what what's the a uh what what would you call it? It's like here's my books type of session. Anyway, that's the thing in the future, and I've got a random Book of Mormon here. Uh, okay, so, you know what? This is probably a good one to do an example with. Okay, my computer's starting up now, but basically, the way I would approach this, if I want to do a study session using this book, is I will jump into the book, um, possibly to a spot where I last left off. I've actually done some of my study using this book already, and... What I'll do is, I'll go to, let's say, I'll find a section. So we've got Internazia el dono de dia voi signoi por legantoi. So the international edition of the um, godly or heavenly, like, voice signoi. That would be like the signals of a path. Not, not signals, that would be, um, God, the English word is like, it's, it's escaped my head and it's for readers. So... Now that my computer's on, just give me a moment, I'm just going to log in. Okay, so I've opened up the computer, I've got my trusty notepad, I've got my phone here with me because I've got an Esperanto dictionary in here, and I've got the book, and this is literally how I study at a higher level. I'll just start reading. Dia voi signui, estas uno el sancte libroi de Aomoto. Of course that would pop up right now. Go away teams. So here's an example of, let's say, a sentence that I want to build out. So we've got... Um, it's talking about en sep volumoi, so in seven volumes, automate scribita de Deguchi Nao, so automatically written by Deguchi, Fondintino de Omoto, so she's the founder of Omoto, en havantai la profetajo in caevertoin, so containing the prophecies and the warnings pri mal construo cae reconstruo del mondo about the uh, destruction and reconstruction of the world. But what I care about here is this use here, en havantai, because this here is actually linked up to here, and sep volumoi, and havantai. So it's in seven volumes having the prophet, uh, the uh, the prophecies. So what I would do is I'll type out this entire sentence, and then I'm going to wrap this part here 
inside a closed statement with an Anki. So we'll do that now. Okay, so I've just typed out the sentence, as you can see right here up on the screen. Now I'm going to go to my Anki, and I'm going to go into an Esperanto deck, and I'm going to add this card in. So basically all I'm doing is I'm copying this text, I'm putting it right in there. I might have to move this closer. So I've put it in here and I'm going to grab this part and I'm just going to uh, wrap it in that and I'm going to say, just give myself a hint, containing. And that's it. Now you might be thinking, well that's obvious that that's like if you know the grammar of Esperanto you shouldn't really need to do that. But the whole point here is that when I'm reading this card back, I'm going to be like, encept volumoi, blah 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 blah. And then I'm going to hit this close statement and I don't even want to see the English. Like the English, like at first I will need to look at the English to know what word should swap in there. But after a while of doing this card a few times over, my brain is going to automatically know what word should be just slotted in there. And it's just going to say it. And the whole benefit of that is that if you have thousands of these cards with like closed statements filling in specific pieces here and there, and your brain just automatically knows what to fill without thinking about it in English at all, what happens is then when you're in conversation, actually speaking in the language, you just start filling in the blanks without having to think about that specific thing. And you, your brain knows what to choose because it's following a pattern. So it's following a pattern of in seven of something or in a number of something, and then you sidetrack, which was done by blah, blah, blah. And then you want to go back to that thing, which is containing, rather than, than going, oh, Q and Havas, your brain's just gonna know, oh, well, I've seen this pattern before, en Havantai, and it's just gonna fill it in. But it takes some practice of seeing these words filled in certain places, and that's why when I speak, Espr uh, speak Esperanto, I can just randomly create quite complex sentences using these forms because I've practiced these over and over and over. Now, here, there's a few other ones like Profetajoi. Um, although I know how to say that, like in the moment, I'd probably be like, mm, I could probably come up with it. But it's not something I often say. So I want to practice it a little bit. So I'll just make a separate card just for that as well. So I'm just going to go that one there. I'm going to wrap that up. And I'm going to say um, prophecies. If I know how to spell prophecies. Oh, God. Oh, God. How do I spell prophecies? Why would I not remember that? Let me just quickly check. Uh, yeah, there we go. Of course it's a PH. Sorry, this often happens is when I operate in another language, I suddenly forget the spelling of English because English spelling is just so... I was going to use a bad word then, but not good. Uh, anyway, that's basically how I go through this. Um, and the, I will do this for like 30 minutes. I'll create a bunch of uh, cards, maybe 20 cards. And these cards aren't even hard. Like, these cards I will easily do the next day. But it's not about the difficulty here for me. It's just about training my brain to just know what to fill in, in certain blanks, in certain um, patterns or forms of sentences. And that's how you get to a very high level of fluency. Because what is the difference between, say, an intermediate and a high level? Well, I would say the difference is uh, the, the size of your vocab, so how much words you obviously know. You, you chuck in like an extra thousand, two thousand, three thousand words, um, but you're not going to use the majority of those words. But in those few occasions where you do use them, that's where it, the, the high level versus the intermediate comes into play. And the other thing is being able to use complex grammar forms. And how do you practice those? This is how. And how do you know that this is a good sentence? Well, this book has been edited, and it's been edited by some really good, uh, well-known Esperanto speakers. And it's an official publication. So I don't have to worry about whether this is good Esperanto I'm putting in here or not, especially at my level, because I can just tell straight away. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you've got any other questions about how to deal with high-level stuff, this is pretty much like the core of what I do at High Level Esperanto. Like, there's not much more. Uh, the only other thing I would say is that helped me. 
a lot was that I made hundreds, like hundreds and hundreds of videos in Esperanto, which forced me to practice speaking. Now, I'm not proposing that you go out there and make hundreds and hundreds of videos in Esperanto, although the Esperanto community will absolutely love you for it because they love videos. Um, but that was the only other thing I did. Now, obviously that contributed a lot to my speaking fluency, but that I would say didn't necessarily, so that would, that helps a lot with speaking fluency, but it does not help with expanding your abilities in the language. Now, a lot of people will suggest that you just read a book. You just sit there and you just read a book, read books, read books, and eventually you absorb the language. I don't like that method, mainly because there's no way of measuring it. I like to be able to measure when I'm growing my language. Uh, like, by adding cards, I can see that I've added a thousand cards over the last few months, and I know all those, so clearly I've grown in my ability. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I'll speak to you guys next time.